go. Yes, we are go. We are. Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. And today I'm joined by XBL Spartan X170. We're going to be talking about conservatism versus volunteerism. So uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, go right ahead. Hello, I'm XBL Spartan X170. I'm a young millennial libertarian conservative. And I'm here to discuss with Filthy Heretic about the nation state versus the anarchy he proposes. All right. And before we get into it, uh, just let's start with the opening statements. So what I want in general is a completely voluntary society where all social organization is done on the basis that you only associate with people that you want to associate with. people who you want to be with, your friends, your family, your coworkers, and that no organization on earth is justified in forcing you to do things that you wouldn't voluntarily do. Nobody can point a gun to you and call themselves righteous because they call themselves a government. Nobody can take money from you on the promise that's being done for a charitable cause. Every action that forces association is a violation of self-ownership and a violation of basic human rights. The state does all of these things and somehow calls itself justified. I want a voluntary society, and the state is fundamentally destructive towards this end. You're done? Yeah. Uh, you want to go ahead? Okay. As a conservative, I believe in personal responsibility, the importance of tradition, the defense of our borders against illegal immigrants, and laissez-faire supply-side economics to ensure prosperity for all people within the nation. And similar to you, I agree that persons should be free to associate with whomever they want, freedom of speech, freedom of press, right to bear arms. I believe in all of that. But when it comes to moral issues such as abortion or prostitution or drugs, I'm us conservatives just don't want that. We, it's just wrong. All right, thank you. So where should we start? Uh, let's talk about the question of uh, morality. So from your latest video uh, against uh, what's his name, Razor Fist, in defense of John McCain, you mentioned that you believe in objective morality. Would you please elaborate on that? What I mean by I believe in Jock morality is that there is a morality that is God given. It is natural to us. There is an objective right and there's an objective wrong. And whew, it's kind of hot under this blanket. But anyways, is that murder is wrong, prostitution is wrong, drugs are wrong, and you should just know these things. Nothing is relative. It is an absolute. All right. So the, my next question is, uh, how do we know what is right and wrong? Well, how do we know what is right and wrong? Well, we can just, well, sometimes you just have to trust your common sense, you know. I mean, obviously, murder is wrong. It takes your loved ones away from you. It ruins people's lives. It, it traumatizes people. And that's obvious why murder is wrong. Prostitution is wrong because it transmits disease. Uh, excuse me, uh, you're cutting it in and out. Well, drugs are wrong because they harm the body, they're addictive, and the end result is never good. Especially with the hard drugs, the addiction often ends in death. And I think it makes perfect sense why drugs should be illegal. Yes, yeah, for prostitution, yeah, it spreads disease. It's it goes completely against the idea of nuclear family, traditional marriage. You get the picture, right? Yeah, I just so uh, yeah, you it's easy to figure out right from wrong just by using common sense alone. You don't I, have to look to the Bible itself. It, I just, I just don't. I'm not entirely clear on. What common sense is. You're not entirely clear on what common sense is? Yes. I feel like it's in a I feel like it's a uh 
it's a rather subjective argument as to what common sense is. It's How is common to... sense objective? I mean, it is just your gut instinct. But my if gut you instinct feel is that be... something's wrong, it is, it, for sure, it's just wrong. Uh, but that's going to be different from individual to individual. You might have a gut instinct that, say, prostitution is wrong or that drugs are wrong. I, however, do not have those gut instincts. Well, some people just have better moral intuition than others. How can you determine this? How can I determine it? How can you well, determine how, uh, excuse me, uh, how can you determine who has a better gut instinct for these things or not? I might have a gut instinct that says that black people are wrong and should not exist. But that doesn't mean that my gut opinion is correct. Well, yeah, it is pretty wrong because it's completely rational and unfair that you should hold persons of certain races as inferior simply account of the race. That's just objectively not right. Hence why common sense and the use of rationality and logic can lead to morality itself. Well, you're talking about two different things there because you're making an appeal to objective to objectivity and uh, logic, whereas before you're making an appeal to common sense, which I think we've already established to be subjective. No, I think logic and common sense are pretty much the same thing, my book. You've told me that common sense is derived from gut instinct or gut feelings. Well, not just gut instinct, gut feelings. Sometimes your mind plays a role in it, but... Sometimes you just kind of let them work together, and then you can come to a better conclusion. Well, let me try to uh, work something out. I'm just going to try to talk you through at least my understanding of ethics and morality, and you can let me know what you think. Okay. So I think what we want is for a system of right and wrong. We agree that right and wrong is preferable to not having any system of right and wrong at all. But how do you enforce an objective morality if everyone can just make their own subjective opinions as law? Well, one moment. Uh, we are going to get to that. I'm just asking, just as a basic framework, that we agree that having a system of right and wrong, just a system of objective right and objective wrong. Yes, a singular system of right and wrong. Okay, perfect. can't be deviated from. Correct. Okay, that's perfect. So a system has to be universal and unchanging. So if something is wrong, it is always wrong. If something is right, I mean, it has to always be right. Towards this end, I think the best um, measurement of right and wrong is to use the first principles of logic, which is to say uh, the principle of non-contradiction, the principle of consistency. Are you familiar with those? Exactly. Just it means basically don't be a hypocrite. Pretty much. So we agree on that. So we can determine yeah. that, for example, murder is wrong because the the opposing statement, murder is right, is contradictory. Because if murder was right, then it would be then it would be uh, assumed that other people would be trying to kill you, and thus you can't really call. The act of killing someone murder can you at best it would, exactly. it would be assisted suicide. exceptions to this like well there are exceptions like if you're killing in self-defense hence the something called the castle document and someone's invading your personal private property you have a right to sh with and if you know they have the intent to steal something or hurt you in any way you have the right to kill them in certain states well that's not that's not murder that's killing well how well, sometimes you need the. Well, sometimes it overlaps. It's just a blurry area when it comes to that. Because sometimes it, it can, you can think that someone's intruding your home, and sometimes it could be someone you weren't intending to kill in the first place. And then before you know it, you ended up committing the manslaughter. So you got to know exactly if the person is intending to hurt you in any way before you initiate force. But sometimes people don't do that. They usually jump the gun, no pun intended. Yeah, sure. 
So in general, there's going to be different severity depending on the circumstances, but as a general rule, initiating force against someone to kill them without their consent. But yeah, they still have the right to, but it's very it's controversial at best because you know no third party is there to make sure that yes, he wanted to hurt you and that you had the right to shoot them. Yeah. But uh, what I've just described is... This is uh, why we have courts. Wait one second. We're going to get to that a little bit later. So what I had just described in terms of you can't... you Like the statement that murder is wrong is correct because the opposing statement is murder is right is a self-contradictory statement. And well, in order to, yeah. and because of the rule of self contradiction or the rule of non contradiction, it cannot possibly be true. And because of the rule of consistency, in order to prove something is right, you can prove all you have to do is just prove that the opposite is wrong, assuming that the two are a true dichotomy. So, for example, I've used this in a video before actually. If you have an apple and an orange, all you have to do to prove that what that item one is an apple is to prove that item one is not an orange. Okay. So, yeah. so now we can so, we can apply this thing to other statements of morality as well. So take the statement uh, theft is wrong. Mm -hmm. yep. So theft is wrong because you are unjustifiably seizing someone else's property that isn't yours. Mm -hmm. No, that is true. Uh, we can go a little deeper and say that, let's, let's take the opposing statement. Theft is right. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, theft is not right because that means unjustified seizure of property is not right, is, I mean, is right, which does, doesn't make any sense. Well, if you take the statement theft is right, then the taking of property is always justified. In that case, it's expected, and in that case, it's not theft, is it? Well, I think I know where you're going with this. You're saying that taxation is theft, right? Uh, actually, no, I'm going somewhere else with this. We're going to get into taxation later, I imagine. But I'm just oh. trying to get a framework of uh, morality and ethics here. So... You understand that the state, I'm pretty sure by now you understand the statements that uh, in order for something to be a moral rule, it has to not be able to contradict itself. Yeah, I'm listening. So I'm hearing you. So here's the next statement. Drugs are wrong. They are wrong. All right. Well, now, it, oops, are you going to say something? No. What were you going to say? Yes, I was just going to say, so we can take the, so. Using the rules we've established before, uh, we have the opposing statement, drugs are right. So in order to prove that drugs are wrong, we have to prove that the uh, opposing statement, drugs are right, is false. Correct. So how do we do this? Well, drugs aren't right because they're addictive, they take control of you, and they damage your body and mind. Of course. Well, that just that's just a physical description of the harm that can be done to it, which is, by the way, not exclusive to drugs. I mean, there are a lot yeah. of things that you can ingest into your body that can cause harm. Simple food can cause harm and, in some cases, can actually be addicting, especially when you take them in excess. I mean, in theory, you can take a tiny enough dose of cyanide that it is completely harmless. But that doesn't Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Every aptitude has at least a little bit of cyanide in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's in trace amounts, so like one one millionth of a gram, I think. But, it, yeah, it's... But in general, it's like, the ingestion of cyanide is not immoral. It's not a good idea to do so, for obvious reasons, but I think in the case of ingesting cyanide, it's a question of preference rather than morality. And I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to alcohol and weed, because there really is no conclusive study just seeing if they're if 
they're addictive in any way or, or whatnot. Well, there are alcoholics, but for people who are non-alcoholics, if you take it in moderation, it's completely harmless. But we, we're still on drug. We're, we're still, uh, we can talk about that. Alcohol later, is a we're drug. Still, we're, just talking, we're still talking about drugs, though. Okay. So, I mean, we still haven't proven that drugs are immoral. Do they? Drugs are immoral. Do, do drugs, uh, does taking drugs in some way contradict the definition well, the of drugs? Well, the harm drugs, yes. What? Uh, did you say something? Yes, I said, uh, do the, does the use or ingestion of drugs contradict the definition of drugs? It doesn't contradict it. So, I don't exactly know where you're going with this. I'm just trying to figure out uh, where the logical contradiction is in terms of taking drugs that would prove the statement drugs are right to be incorrect. Drugs are not right because you are not required to take them. You're not required to not take them. I mean, yeah. You're not required to take them doesn't really, uh, I don't really think that means anything. I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to state when you say that you're not required to take them. I mean, there's a lot you're of not things required that not to take to drugs, you know, to live or live a normal life or any of that stuff. Yeah, but there are a lot of things that you can do that you're not required to do. Us having this discussion, we can live our entire lives having never actually talked to each other and still live a normal life. I, I so, just wanted to do this. Yeah, it's, and I'm not criticizing you for it, by all means. I'm just stating that there are a lot of things that people do on a daily basis, even an hourly basis, that are not required for their survival. So saying that drugs are wrong because... Uh, you're not required to take them is not a reasonable statement. Well, you're not required to take them to be healthy. That, there's a lot of things that can do that as well. The fact that health or health is not relevant. Okay. So, so we're just debating logic right now. I thought we'd be debating actual talking points. Uh, we can do that. Uh, it's just that right now I want to explain the basis for at least my understanding of ethics and morality. And so I think you don't really have a logical basis to say that drugs are wrong because you can't prove the statement drugs are right to be false. No, I think you're just feeding me rebels that look stupid. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. No, I think you're just feeding me rebels to make me look stupid. Uh, not, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to help walk you through this, uh, at least my understanding. Okay. So, so yeah, I understand where you're coming from. But yeah, so. I'll you can stick with my guns. So, I don't see the same thing in regards to the. I see the same thing in regards to the prostitution, in regards to gay marriage, in regards to all sorts of other things. Now, that's not to say that I enjoy these things or personally partake in them. I mean, I was uh, previously a conservative myself. I still disagree with gay marriage. I have never taken drugs in my life. I think it's a terrible habit. But my personal preference is by no means a moral statement or moral arguments. So that's just my understanding. The fact of the matter is that, in my opinion, uh, people should be allowed to do whatever it is they want so long as they bring no harm to other, other people. If that means having sex with, uh, if that means having sex with people of the same sex, that's their decision to make. It's their mistake to make, in my opinion, but yes, yes, they have they make, the free will to do so. It makes course, sense. Of course. And they must be uh, permitted to do so, be able permitted to make, the, make those kinds of mistakes. Whether or not they view them as mistakes is none of my concern. I'm probably going to continue making mistakes myself in my own life. And, and sure just because they're free to do so does not mean they're free from the consequences of such, 
or said actions. Of course, I, that's absolutely correct. But uh, now so we can, I think we agree on more things than you think. Yeah, think. of course. I'm just uh, helping you walk. I'm just helping uh, you walk through certain th certain uh, theories about. Sorry, I can't speak right now. I'm just helping you walk through deontological ethics, which is to say that uh, the rules of ethics are derived from the first principles of logic. I made a video about this, and it explains everything from uh, non-aggression principle all the way up to property rights. Suffice to say, property rights are derived from self-ownership. You own the things that you own because you put labor into acquiring them, or someone else who put labor into getting it for themselves voluntarily gave it to you, traded you for it. And the only way that someone else has a claim to your property is if uh, they contributed labor to it or otherwise are voluntarily giving it to you for whatever reason they wish. Well, yes, that's part of the capitalist system. You choose where to work. Exactly. You choose your occupation. Mm -hmm. The problem is, though, when you have a system of a system of a certain group of people who call themselves, let's say, the mafia, and they demand that you give them, say, 15% of everything you earn for whatever reason they wish, then they are making a claim that they own 15% of your labor. Now, you cannot uh, part yourself from your labor because uh, the self is not divisible. Well, you can uh, remove yourself from the oranges that you own, apart from them. Or, you know, okay, that's a bond. bit of a strongman argument because you don't own the money. Federal Reserve loans it out to the banks, which loans it out to companies, which loans it out to you. I'm not even and talking you, about the Federal Reserve. I'm not talking about currency. I'm talking about simple oh. ownership of property. Well, I thought you were talk, starting to talk about taxation because you said something about the mafia taking 15% of what you own. Well, the mafia, I am using the mafia as an example of taxation. Yes, that's what we're talking about, taxation. Yeah. But I mean, like, uh, let's see, what is it? <laughs> sorry, you made me lose. Sorry, you made me lose my train of thought. So the the problem is that the problem with taxation is that it is the it is a claim that a group of people who call themselves a government have a claim to a percentage of your property. Now, what percentage of that proper that property that uh, they have control over is set by the government and they can and you are required at least according to the government to give it to the government now they didn't do anything to contribute to said labor they don't have any legitimate claim over it because they didn't do anything to acquire the labor they just say that you owe it it's a it's fundamentally a violation of property rights and a violation of self ownership as well since if someone else as a claim to the ownership of your labor, that makes them your slave. No, 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 you are not a slave because you have control over how much you are taxed. Uh, no, you don't. Well, our representatives, we elect the representatives who represent us on our behalf. That's kind of how civil democracy works. Except the best you can possibly do is vote for someone every arbitrary number of months or years and hope for the best that the one representative and the one representative you send among the 435 members of Congress and the one senator you vote for among the 100 members of the Senate are strong enough to convince all the other members of the Senate and members of the House that uh, a taxation preference that you have is worthy of being passed into law. And you don't even vote for President of the United States. That's just a popular vote. Well, yeah, there is the Electoral College, but most of the delegates are actually bound by the popular vote. Well, the Democratic National Convention does have a problem with superdelegates, which got me, got everyone absolutely pissed with them and rightfully got Donald Trump into office because of that. And Hillary Clinton was just a shit cherry on top. Mm -hmm. But as I was saying, yeah. the, uh, the idea that you have, that you set the tax rates is 
rather silly. An esoteric entity has actually pointed out that the odds of something being passed into law are identical if 100% of the people support a certain piece of legislation or 0%. The odds do not change. So it doesn't matter if you're voting for the uh, you vote for representatives or not. They're I don't know. Do We've had want. plenty of tax cuts under Trump already. We've had one system of – I hesitate to call them tax cuts because there were tax hikes elsewhere. Mostly they were hidden, but anyways, the uh, fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter what the tax rate is. It is fundamentally a violation of property rights and self-ownership. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure you own the money itself? I own what I own. The fact yes. whether or not whether or not uh, the price is irrelevant. And besides, yes, I do own the money. Yes, you own the property. But do you own the the? But do you own the money that's associated with that property? Because yes. Yes. I own the value of that property. Well, yes, but the money you used to purchase that property was loaned to you by a company which had that money loaned to them by a bank, which was loaned to them by the Federal Reserve. And we all kind of owe a little bit of money back towards the Federal Reserve because they're basically in charge of the currency. And how did the Federal Reserve get their ownership of money? Uh, I think it was back in the Federal Reserve Act of 1912. Uh, 1913, but yes. Basically what happened is that the, is that the federal government, uh, through the legislative process, gave nationalized the money supply. So in other words, they gave themselves the, owner, the monopoly on money. And somehow they have a legitimate claim to ownership of money. But yeah, and also around the same time, that's where they passed the income tax, which I also don't agree with. I think taxes should be on sales and consumption and property, not well, personal income. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They don't, uh, they don't have a legitimate claim to any percentage of taxation. They don't have a legitimate claim to your property. They can't, Are you uh, sure? Because your property is within the sovereign territory of the United States. I think they have a right to some parcel of your property. The only reason that they would have that legitimate claim is if they had a legitimate claim to ownership of that said property in the first place, which they do not. Nope. I think it states in the Constitution that you basically consent to be taxed upon being a citizen and owning property. Uh, that actually, is in no. Our, it doesn't the national it, contract. Uh, actually, no. It doesn't uh, claim that I consent to be taxed. It just says that the federal government is authorized to tax. However, this does not mean that they that I give my consent to it, especially since I did not sign the Constitution. But they're legally authorized, so it's not theft. It does, no, that's theft not Theft is works. seizure of property. That's not legally authorized. That's circular logic. No, no, it's not. I'm just explaining how taxation is different from theft. You do realize that that you do realize that that's circular, right? It's not theft because the uh, it's legally authorized. Well, how does it legally authorized? Because they uh, they gave themselves the authorization to take money without consent. In which case, like really, all you're arguing for is that the government gave itself a double standard. But you do benefit in some way from paying the taxes. It does that's, pay for the roads, the schools. That's not uh, relevant. That's not relevant. You're completely trying to ignore the immorality of taxation itself. The fact that I benefit doesn't really matter. There, I'm being stolen from. You're being stolen from, and they're taking money without our consent. That should piss you off. That you've been lied to your entire life that somehow this is justified and that these people who call them who just gave themselves this fancy title called government suddenly have the ability to do something that if you and I tried ourselves would get us thrown in jail and rightfully so because as we established earlier theft is always wrong. It's just something you have to do as a United States citizen. You have to give a certain amount of money to the government 
You're right. Common you, good. Well, you do have to, but that's only because it's required by law, and you'll get thrown in, thrown in a cage if you don't. The fact that it's uh, the fact that it's for the common good, or that you might get something out of it, is irrelevant to the fact that well, it's not exactly. Itself. You might get harassed by the IRS or be given be sent to a civil court, but you won't exactly be criminally prosecuted because of it. Well, that's even better then. I mean, at least better for people like myself. But it really should just uh, annoy the hell out of you. That I mean, the people... IRS doesn't really have as much power as people think it has. Yeah. Sure, they can poke and fudge buttons, but they really don't have any right legal right to arrest you if you're not paying your taxes. Oh, speaking of which, you want to hear a fun fact? Sure. This is going to blow people's minds. You are not legally required to pay income taxes. What? Yes, I, I'm not even joking. This is a, it, There is no law in the United States that requires you to pay income taxes. Well, not a federal law, but state laws, it varies state by state. Uh, actually, no, they don't. I mean, maybe not all states, but... Uh, well, not all states have income taxes. That, that's also true. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the way it works is that uh, if you consent to be taxed, which is done through the uh, federal 1040 form, then, yes, you are required to pay federal income taxes. But if you... Uh, generally know what you're doing by all means don't try to avoid uh don't try to uh set yourself for don't try to avoid paying income taxes unless you know exactly what you're doing because uh this is very difficult to actually pull off but yeah there's no law in the federal register that requires you to pay income taxes but anyways we got uh, completely sidetracked so back to the ethics of morality if you do believe in objective morality that something is wrong and if it's wrong it's always wrong then the fact that you might get something out of it or the fact that it might be for this cause you believe in whether it's a common good or not is really not relevant you are being stolen from really yes i mean there's no how can i be stolen from if i'm getting a service in return for it that's you're just getting... The question that's is, not theft. That's just a transmutation of my value into something of a greater service. If an econ if an economic uh, transaction were taking place, then tra then taxation would not be necessary because people would just give money voluntarily to the federal government. I mean, people do this all the time in regards to well, people sometimes do society. purchase of savings bonds, but that's a well, they do no. so because they voluntarily consent to receive those savings bonds in in uh, in money. The difference between a voluntary transaction and theft is consent, and you do not give your consent to be taxed. Well, well, I think uh, uh, I mentioned earlier is people usually are tricked into it because they really don't know what they're signing. Well, if you consent to set up a business in U.S. sovereign territory, you consented to be taxed by that government. They have a right to a certain piece of that revenue. No, they don't. They don't have a right to anything. That's the law. No, it's uh, that's theft. The fact that it's the fact that uh, the same people who said that it's okay for you, a certain percentage of your money to be taken suddenly give themselves a legal authorization to do so is completely irrelevant. If I go over to your house and say that you owe me 30% of your money, and here's the law I wrote down in my bedroom that says that you have to uh, give me a certain amount of your money, you would tell me to take a hike. And rightfully so. Hell, you might actually pull out your gun and tell me to take a hike, and you would be completely justified in doing so. The fact that this organization in Washington, D.C. that calls itself a government is doing this is not relevant to the fact that they're doing it wrong. I mean, you can't say that theft is wrong until the guy committing theft says it's okay. At the very least, that's a conflict of interest, isn't it? Uh, not exactly, though. I mean... What, you didn't have anything else to say? Well, not exactly. I mean, 
They have the legal authority to do it. It's in our constitution. They need the money for our borders, for our military, for our police, for our schools. And if we don't have taxes, how are we ever going to pay for any of that? Well, that's a good question. How would you pay for it without taxes? I don't know if I can afford any of that without taxes. Well, you personally might not be able to, but you value these things, right? Yeah. Okay. You think a bunch of other people value those things? I appreciate getting a K-12 through education for absolutely free. Well, I mean, instead it's of not just free. having to pay for it out of pocket. For well, my I mean, own it's not. Money. Well, well, let's get this uh, clear. Government schools aren't free. They're paid for with taxes. Property taxes more specifically, but... Well, at least yeah, I didn't have free. to pay for it out of pocket. That would have been prohibitively expensive. Well, that's arguable. But uh, anyways, the point is that you value it, a whole bunch of other people value it, it'll be paid for. People will pay for it voluntarily. Yeah, there are private schools out there, but yeah. they're just they're be, really lame. They'll be private... There'll be private, uh, well, private schools outperform government schools, and home schools or homeschool children outperform uh, government school children significantly. But uh, the point is that if people yeah, but there are things, drawbacks to homeschooling. If people, uh, I'd rather not talk about that in the scope of this current discussion. We could probably do that later. Uh, yeah, we need to stay on topic here. So, crap! What was I saying? Oh yeah, if the people. Uh, value these things. I mean, you value it. Uh, I, of course, value security in my society. I value uh, protection. I value these things. Well, if you value any of these things, then you should consent to be taxed because that's, well, that's, that's the services the government provides. Security, education, health. Well, that's my point. I mean, if people value these things, then you don't need to I mean, just refusing to be taxed simply because you think it's theft is kind of being a bit of an angry. Uh, we'll worry about that later. But uh, as I was saying, the, the people want to pay for these things. They're going to want to pay for it voluntarily. Taxation isn't necessary, is it? Well, not everyone wants to pay for it voluntarily. Sometimes you have to tax them. Well, then that means that they don't value it, which means why Why would you force them to? What right do you have to determine what other people should pay for? Well, they don't value it because they don't think it's important to themselves, but it might be important to other people. Okay. Well, there's a lot of things that it's I It's not value just about that's... what you want. Exactly. It's not about what I want. It's not about what you want either. I mean, there's all sorts of things that I may value highly that you might consider to be worthless garbage. I mean, what's your favorite video game? Uh, what's the last video game I? Well, there's Fortnite. Okay. Uh, my favorite game is Metroid Prime. Uh, came out on the GameCube in 2003. You probably think that that's uh retro trash. Well, you probably don't no, no. I love retro games. That's an oldie but a goodie. Oh, it's I'm, I have an, I still have my old Nintendo 64. Oh, by nice. The way. Nice. Uh, well, never mind then. Well, anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Fortnite. I see why people like it, but I personally not my kind of game. But yeah, people have different preferences and tastes. Things you might find greatly enjoyable, I might dislike and vice versa. So I have no justification in imposing what I value onto you. You pay for the things that you value. I pay for the things for, that I value. I mean, you might want to uh, buy all sorts of Fortnite skins, and I might want everybody to download at least a ROM of Metroid Prime and play it on an emulator. Which, by the way, people should totally do. The game is freaking awesome. But anyways, yeah. Yeah. But the fact that uh, the fact that you have some forty-year-old whose kids are probably out. Uh, in an entry-level job, and therefore they have no reason to pay for schools anymore. The fact that they don't value those schools anymore and aren't paying for it is perfectly fine. They shouldn't have to pay for things that they don't want to, or rather they don't even need. 
But everyone needs an education, dude. Uh, you don't know that, actually. Everybody's well, unless you're needs, Well, everybody's needs and preferences are going to differ significantly. And what people need and what they want, they'll pay for voluntarily. You don't really need to force people to pay for things. All you're really saying is that I ha this is my opinion. Everybody should pay for it. And if they don't, I'm going to lock them in a cage. Or at least that's the argument of taxation, not your argument specifically. Well, like, well, like I said before, they're not going to lock you in a cage for it, but they still can sue you for it. Which is going to be the financial equivalent of throwing you into a cage. And suing you for it can put you behind uh, five figures, even six figures in debt, which is very much a life ruin. Yeah. So, either way, not optimal. But Not optimal, but you at least you have a right to a defense in a court of law, in case you have a dispute. You have a right to the defense in a court of law, and that a right you to shouldn't order. that you shouldn't have to be in, that you shouldn't have to need in the first place. Well, yeah, if you think you being taxed is unjust, you have a right to argue about it in a court of law. I'd rather not have to worry about it in the first place. And in fact, I shouldn't have to worry about it in the first place because the fact that the act of taxation itself is fundamentally unjust. I mean, I still don't know what claim or what rights the government has to what I've earned and what I've produced. Well, let's just say it like this. If you found a company... The government at least owns at least a piece of that company, whether no, they you're don't. aware of it or not. No, they don't. I mean, you want to consider the money you owe to your shareholders as your, your shareholders stealing money from you, would you? Well, that's different because the shareholders are in that arrangement voluntarily. And the fact of the matter is the shareholders give me money. And if you don't give them the money, they can kick you out. Exactly. But that's a voluntary arrangement. I don't have to have shareholders. I don't have to have investors. I don't have to take out loans. Those are but if you want to have voluntarily. A, but if you want to have a well funded modern transnational company, you need shareholders. Sure. I mean you might need you might need them, you might So not. it's kind Maybe of a requirement a, in this day and age. I'm not going to say that I'm not going to definitively say that one way or another. I mean, you could have a hyper successful business that doesn't have any shareholders whatsoever. It might be possible. I don't know, but the point is that the shareholder arrangement is completely voluntary. Everybody consented. You, the business owner, consented to owing these people money in the future according to their investment should they decide to take. So do they decide to uh, take their investment out? Okay. But the difference with a uh, government is that it's a fundamentally involuntary arrangement. Nobody consented. Really? Yes. No, I think you consented as soon as you applied for the right to vote. Uh, no. I mean, I, the fact of the matter is that in that case, then all the sales taxes I pay when I bought things with my allowance, uh, they were stealing from me even before I registered to vote. Have I ever told you about the social contract? I made a video about the social contract. Well, it wasn't that comprehensive, but uh, you made a few good points, a few things you kind of skipped out on well for the sake of uh the people who are going to be like you didn't read debate, the entire book by thomas Hobbes. no i didn't and that's something i might that's a bad ha busted i freely admitted to it but anyways the uh the problem with the social contract is that there is no standard of consent that you could possibly have given to the social contract i mean for the first for one thing i Never been able to find any, any social contract. 
You can't say it's a constitution since that's not even signed by anyone, is it? Well, our constitution is signed by our founding fathers. Are you sure that's the con are you sure it's the constitution or the declaration of independence? That's well the declaration of independence is sort of the preamble to the constitution. It's kind of a separate thing, but uh I don't think anyone signed the constitution, least of all I did. More importantly, or sort of the justification uh, for our constitution. Pretty much. But uh yeah, I mean I didn't consent to the being governed under the constitution, and even then it's like Constitution itself has been powerless to prevent the government. No taxation that. without representation. How about no taxation, period? Yeah, but ser seriously, though, uh, the government doesn't. Uh, I didn't consent to the government doing what it does, let's, let alone do what it does to me. And nobody could have done that on my behalf. Otherwise, that's forgery, which is a crime. Well, we consented to putting them in office, so they have the consented authority to tax us. Well, 49% of people in the... Actually, no, 51% of people who voted in the popular vote uh, did not consent to the person in the White House right now. So what right to do does a certain percentage have to impose their will on another percentage? I know, and that's why everyone should vote. Well, no, that's actually avoiding the situation altogether, where you have a, a cert, you have a, a majority imposing their will on the minority, with no with no side ever having consent. No, no, no. To that's why we the, have the, constitutional amendments to prevent the mob tyranny that well, you're talking about. That's a little late for that, especially since uh, especially since the uh, constitutional amendment that made the Senate uh, popularly elected. We pretty much deviated away from mob, deviated away from the avoidance of mob rule entirely. Really? Because I think we fixed many things in the 1960s. Uh, we no, actually, this amendment I believe was passed during the Progressive Era, 17th, I think it is. I'm just trying to remember this off the top of my head. But in general, the amendment, the kind of government that we have today, is. I mean, authorized. the Civil Rights Acts of 1965, for example, stopped the individual states from passing Jim Crow laws that oppress blacks. Oh, no, and there it is, isn't it? More government laws that prevent freedom of association. Okay, so you want segregation? Uh, I want free association. I want people to be able to associate. How can a segregated community freely associate? I never said segregated. I just said I want people to freely associate. Well, how can they freely associate if they're segregated? Well, that assumes that they're segregated first off. I mean, first off, people don't really have an incentive to segregate in the first place, especially least of all businesses, since the only really the only real color that businesses really care about is green. Really, because yeah. I can, because I'm not. Races myself, but I can think of many incentives why a person will want to freely associate with just their own group. And oh. I mean, I see no reason why uh, why we should prevent them. Best of all, moral. But I think we're getting off topic here again. Only problem is, well, I just wanted to make a point of why the rights acts were important. Mm -hmm. That we needed government power to ensure our rights. To free association. Except the government's a violation of free association because you're forced to associate with the government. The idea that you need a government to enforce freedom or to protect freedom of association is like saying you need a murderer to protect your life. Well, then again, that comes back to defining what murder is. But that would mean us getting back to the epistemological argument about that, which kind of went nowhere. Mm -hmm. And the question, and I think the uh, back to the Constitution, I was going to say, this is paraphrasing Lysander Spooner, the Constitution uh, either authorized the government that we currently have or was powerless to prevent it. Either way, the Constitution is not is not justified in existing. 
really, because I think the Constitution is justified for the reason that we declared independence from an oppressive imperial regime that taxed us arbitrarily and without any representation and searched and seized whatever they could without a warrant and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a long story. And before you knew it, we decided, screw this. You want to be the masters of our own destiny, declared independence, and that's how America was born. And the result of trying to escape a imperialist dictatorship, I'm sorry, an imperialist regime that taxed people without their consent is to create another imperialist regime that taxes its own people without its consent. America is not an empire. It is a federation with equal distribution of powers between three separate branches of government and 50 separate states. And those states have divisions of authority through counties, and those counties have individual cities. Well, we can debate, we can debate on the imperialist part. So no it. one really but, has uh, a monopoly on power. Well, the government does. If well, you try you're to, if you talk about the government as a monolithic entity here, and there's many different governments in the U.S. Each of which are hierarchically uh, subjugated to one another. You have the you have the federal government, which is uh, supreme over the state governments, which are supreme over the local governments, which are supreme over the city town governments. And, well, each actually, of them has a, and each of them has a hand in your pocket. Whether you want them to have their have it there or not, the fact that well, we it have, varies from state to state. Some states have income taxes. Uh, excuse, some excuse states me for don't. A you excuse have a right to here. choose which state. Ex excuse me for a second. You cut me off. So the uh, each of them has a hand in your pocket, whether you want them to or not. And the fact that you elect representatives does not change the fact that what they're doing is fundamentally unjust. You may consent to. Uh, having their hand in your pocket, but you have no right to impose that decision on me. Well, me personally, I have no right, but people I elected in the office, I gave them the authority to tax you on my behalf. But you don't have that authority. Well, I personally don't. I'm not well, a politician. You, don't have that, you, you said it yourself, you don't have that authority, so how can you possibly I'm give just people a other powers that you, how can you possibly give pe other people powers that you yourself don't have? Because we elected them. I didn't. Because you don't vote. You're right, I don't vote. So what right do they have to impose their will on me? What right do you have to have people impose their will on, me, on your behalf? It's so everyone is at least giving back into the system. I don't want to give to the system, though. Why not? Because they take more than they give to me. And I never consented to either giving services or or giving funds or receiving services in turn. They give more to you than you'd like to admit. No, they don't actually. And that's something for me myself to determine. And I do not believe that they are meeting my preferences. More importantly, that they are funding things that I personally consider to be murder. For example. The proxy war going on in Syria. They're fun. They're up. They're funding. Really, uh, really. Setting. You think that warrants? You think our action in Syria is unjustified? Oh, ISIS sure. is just. They need to be eradicated. Oh, I completely. completely agree. ISIS needs to be eradicated. But here's the problem: we're funding ISIS. Well, yeah, but. No, I think Obama was funding ISIS. We're still funding ISIS. And Trump kind of switched that around and then decided, no, we're going to take him out. No, Go we're still Obama. funding ISIS. To this day, it's still going. No. No, no. I think you got your sources wrong there, buddy. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. My sources are accurate. In fact, the matter is we're not only funding ISIS, we're funding the... No, uh, how can we be funding ISIS when we're wiping them out? I don't know. That's the kind of... Uh, that's double, like that's a kind of double standard simultaneously that, uh, double standard, uh, funding the Mujahideen while supporting the Soviet Union. It makes no sense. Well, the Mujahideen became uh, Al Qaeda, so that was fun. No, the Mujahideen became the Northern Alliance, which fought the Al Qaeda. They became who? No, the Mujahideen became the Northern Alliance, which fought the Taliban, not Al Qaeda. Are you sure about that? I 
Taliban is in Afghanistan. Al Qaeda is in Iraq. I haven't uh, heard that before, so I'll have to look that one up. That's interesting. But anyways, it's basic uh, geopolitics. To, basically, uh, back to what we were talking about before. I think we were talking about the Constitution. No, we were talking about. Uh, I can't believe you don't know the difference between the Taliban and Al Qaeda. No, no, I seriously. Know I know the difference. It's just that my understanding was that they they morphed into Al Qaeda. I mean, uh, you had uh, what's his name? Osama bin Laden was previously Mujahideen. In fact, he was a CIA contact. Well, that was before he actually went rogue. But we thought we could trust him. Could have trusted him, but he kind of went his own way back in the nineties. Yeah. All right, I remember what we were talking about. The uh, the government funds many things I consider to be murder. For example, the proxy war in Syria and the fact that uh, the United States gives like seventy five percent of Planned Parenthood's operating I just budgets. debunked that. We're not sanctioning murder here. We're stopping murder by taking out ISIS. I'm talking. I'm referring. I was. I moved on to uh, giving huge amounts of money to Planned Parenthood. I mean, you. We both agree. Oh yeah, that abortion, yeah. Planned Parenthood. Yeah, we. No, Trump completely cut off their funding. Completely. Then why are they still funded? Well, some certain well, certain states refuse to follow the federal directives on defunding Planned Parenthood. So. Certain individual blue states, California obviously is still funding Planned Parenthood, but Trump is trying to stop the funding of Planned Parenthood and end this state-sponsored abortion program. Then how come they're still being funded? I mean, he could cut it off uh, weeks ago. There was a uh, a, mi a miniature omnibus, commonly referred to he as he signed the, the executive order, so it's not his fault. It could just be actually some sort it is. Of do you know how the budgetary process works? Do you know how executive orders work? Yes. And in fact, the matter is that they shouldn't even exist in the first place. And I don't even think Trump, under the Constitution, uh, Trump doesn't have the power to unilaterally block funding. But he could, and it's within his power as the head of the executive branch to do so. More specifically, he can send a uh, a budgetary proposal well, he can't, to Congress. Well, he can't unilaterally repeal the bill, the bill, but he can defund the bill. He it's can. Kind of he can, but he can do this he can he can do this with the budgetary process where he sends a budget to Congress, they approve it or change it around, and if it's sent to, back to him to sign as a law and it does fund planned parenthood, he can simply veto it. He has the power within his office to do so. And, and where exactly are you getting this from? Because it's in the Constitution. No, I meant about Planned Parenthood, how it's still being funded. I'm trying to look that up right now. Oh my god. Are you just making this stuff up as you're going along? I am not. I'm going off information off the top of my head. Oh my god. Tick. And you thought you'd be running circles around me, well, but I, I guess I'm holding my own. Completely running circles. No, no, I've just been patiently listening mm -hmm. and laughing. Well, that's not very nice. No, no, I that was just like no, I was just being sarcastic. Yeah, that's a. Uh... Hmm. Don't know how to feel about that actually. Listen, I didn't mean anything by that. Let's just get on back on topic, okay? Because okay. I'm going to be going to bed soon. Yeah, it's. I think it's been over an hour, so... Uh, yeah, yeah I think an hour is long enough for a stream debate any longer, and it'd just be yeah. Sargon length. Yeah, sure. So uh, let's do another five minutes. Sound okay? Yeah, five more minutes. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so there's really no basis for taxation that there's really no basis for the justification for taxation it's just uh, an organization that calls itself a government giving itself a double standard in terms of objective ethics that we both agree on that somehow they are authorized to do things that 
we would be justified in defending ourselves against if someone else taxes allow else the it. government to raise money for things that couldn't be paid for privately such as the space program or the interstate highway system those things couldn't be paid for with a private company well that's not relevant that's completely not important it's that's like entirely saying, relevant to why we need taxes well that's you can take that same exact line of reasoning and say that uh slavery is necessary because how else are we going to get cotton I mean, I don't oh, care how co- I don't care how cotton's going to get picked. I just want slavery to be in, and because slavery is a violation of self ownership, and it's a perversion of property rights. Well, I think what you just said was a logical fallacy. I just can't find the name of what kind of fallacy it is. I think it's um, post hoc ad hoc. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. You're just going off on a non separate issue. I don't know how that would be a uh, a non sequitur. You're comparing taxation to slavery. That's a, a comparison. They're not the same. Theft is not the same as slavery. In a way, taxation is a form of slavery. I mean, if slavery is defined as involuntary labor, then you are laboring a percentage of your life to give slaves aren't paying anything to the owner slaves are just forced to work at gunpoint and are you not forced to work at gunpoint when you work i don't work for the government you work for you work uh for a percentage of your life to pay for the government if you live a hundred years then you'll be spending uh 40 years paying or 40 years working for the government because that's how much of your uh, money is given to them. No correction. They're only allowed to tax you if you have an income. You can well, still they, have money. They tax, they, tax uh, they, they have sales taxes, they have property taxes, they have death taxes, and I don't know very many corpses. Oh, Trump also wants to get rid of the estate tax too, which is also good news for both of us. It's it's good news, yeah, but uh, saying that he wants to do something you know, and actually doing sense, it is right? a, different, a different thing. I mean, originally, in the original uh, tax cut proposal, it was uh, planned to get rid of the estate tax completely. Obviously, that didn't work out, but the fact that it's being proposed is not relevant to the fact that it shouldn't exist in the first place. God. Who's using circular reasoning again? Me or you? Uh, you'll have to explain how that's circular reasoning because I'm not sure I understand. Never mind. Let's just. Maybe I think. Continue. Yeah, let's continue. Yeah, I was just saying that the, there's no basis for the government to tax because the government doesn't produce anything that anyone wants. At least not voluntarily, otherwise taxation wouldn't be necessary. I don't know. I want educate I want public education. I want to drive on an interstate highway where I don't have to stop. I love, I love our space program. I love our satellites, which allow you to watch TV. Well NASA doesn't watch those in cell space. Phone. Those aren't NASA satellites. But anyways, well, still, like, NASA yeah. provides the infrastructure for, for these corporations to launch their satellites in space. I think you can see that uh, but, if, the, if you find these things valuable, then you should demand that these things not be paid for via taxes so that they can be done more efficiently through the free market, through competition. But, yeah, the NASA example isn't that compelling because... I'm, I mean, yeah, the there way. are new these new space startups, but that's getting off track. It's not the topic here. Well, the important thing is that like uh, you have to be very clear. If you believe in objective ethics, then there's no possible reason that you can justify the existence of the state. You just can't. Otherwise, you're creating a double except state. for borders that keep you know bad people out. That's a violation of freedom of association. Oh, you want the you want to welcome MS13 into our country with open arms? You want to welcome in a bunch of those Muslims? 
which by the way, that's a, that's, it was weak that's, immigration that's, controls that allowed 9-11 to happen. That's a red herring. The, no, it's uh, not. If we properly vetted those people, they wouldn't have hijacked those aircraft and crashed them into the World Fucking Trade Center, killing 3,000 people. That's why border that, control this is, is important. This is, this is terribly off topic. The uh, problem with no, that it's completely on topic. Why we need government? No, we don't need government. And even if we did need government, it wouldn't matter because government. Yes, is we need government because who's gonna watch the bad people? I will. Who's gonna go after them? I will. Oh, are you trained in criminal justice? Sure, why not? Or at least very like trained in crime scene investigation, crypto analysis, any of that? Sure. Are you skilled in it? Sure. No, you're not. I'm not now, but I can be. Are you sure about that? Sure, why not? <sighs> no, I mean, I don't no, have those no. skill I don't have those skills now, but you know, I'm smart. I could figure it out or I could learn it. We're not burning down libraries here. We're just uh, trying to figure this stuff, trying to figure out how to do but, things about the states. But, but I mean, it like, doesn't take one person. It takes a concerted, collected effort between multiple agencies to stop these people. And we can't have that without a state. No, we need that's, the state. That's extremely. That's a, a demonstration of a complete lack of creativity on your part. I can think of a lot of things that a lot of people do every day. Where they associate with one of those new things collectively. Oh, and you know what the icing on the cake is? The private air support, the private airport security during 9 11 was completely fucking useless. It wasn't until we nationalized airport security that things became air freaking tight. You mean with their 95% failure rate? There's a study done. Really? Like, there's a study done with uh, airport security where. PSA has a 95% failure rate on the mock bomb components that were sent through, while private airport security got a 95% success rate. But even then, it's like, it's not private, secu private security at airports isn't quite private since they're contracted by the government. Well, as of the Patriot Act, yes. But before, the private airport security was pretty hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be honest here. The uh, TSA is just sure uh, public airports. Sure, government airport security has its flaws. TSA has its flaws, but it's a lot better than what we had before. Well, it's mostly uh, it's mostly security theater. So you're kind of invoking the Nirvana fallacy in that oh, government security isn't helping that much. So you might as well just repeal all together. Well, what I'm trying to say is that the uh, government is immoral, and if you're going to say that you're uh, you believe in objective morality, stop it. How is it immoral if they stop these, if they want to stop the bad people? If the, they want to stop these terrorists, Their intentions these criminals? aren't important. You're getting distracted by, uh, you're distracting yourself with these uh, flowery ideals of what the government should be or what they could be. And they very well may meet those expectations, but it doesn't matter because none of those are statements of ethics or morality. The fact that the government stops uh might stop certain terrorist attacks is not relevant to the fact that the government itself is immoral it's like saying that i you i don't you it's like saying that a certain model car is bad because you were in a taxi cab that was using that certain model of car and you didn't like the way that the air freshener smelled okay so you can't say you believe in objective morality and then say that uh, it's okay for the government to commit objectively immoral acts. Well, I mean, the government itself is objectively immoral, period. But, yeah. How is it objectively moral if it stops immoral things from happening? You realize what you just said, right? Circular reasoning again? According uh, to you? It's more, no, not circular reasoning, but it's just not relevant. No I'm, no, I'm explaining why the government is not inherently moral in itself. It's well, more amoral, so to speak, in itself. It is the people that comprise it that whether determine whether or not it is used towards moral or immoral ends. 
Well, so you'll have to use it towards email and send me to be found out and thrown in jail. Well, the only Sucking way a government out. could the only way a government could possibly be moral is if it was able to fund itself without taxation, and it didn't impose on it didn't impose on its people through uh, economic restrictions or legislation. That's the only way I could think of. Which, in that case, you can't really call it a government, can you? And government, and our government gets most of its money from loans and securities, anyways, rather than taxes. So, I think taxes are more. I really don't. I, hmm. I really don't like the income tax, but the sales tax disproportionately affects the poor. So maybe I think the only justifiable tax would be the property tax. Well, even then, like it's just the a big tax. impediment and the enormous cost on people who own homes. It's a big disincentive. It's a big disincentive if you're someone who values homes. And I know we're well over five minutes by now. But land is a finite resource. There should be a penalty for taking it, for just hogging the entire space. Well, there's a, already a mechanism by which we can appropriate the finite resources. We don't need uh, taxation to do this. We do this all the time in the economy. It's called prices. Right. But I mean, economics is just figuring out how to, it's just the dis figuring out how to distribute finite resources. And the reason that things have a price in the first place is because there's a finite supply of them. It's simple supply and demand. Yes, simple supply and demand curve, basic yeah. economics. I'm glad you understand that. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the whole point of the supply and demand curve is that it's a way that we can distribute. It's a way that uh, I don't want to say we can distribute land because that implies it's some central bureaucracy that's appropriate, that's handing land out. But it's the way that uh, the supply of land, the finite supply, is able to be given to the people who can best make use of it. Or just hog it and just turn it into a big, big ass lawn and just plot their mansion in the middle of it. Sure, why not? I mean, if they want to do that, that's fine. They're probably uh, making the best use of that property anyway. Kind of a waste of resources, and they should be at least a bit penalized for that. Uh, well, they kind of are in the sense that all the land that's not being used is land that's kind of being wasted already. And therefore, the property is not as valuable as it could be. Well, who is going to fix that if there's no government to mediate the distribution of property? That's a good question. Why don't you answer that one? Really? You're shifting the burning proof onto me? I asked you the question. Yeah, you did. I'm just, uh, I just want you to answer it because I'm trying to get you to exercise your creativity and uh, figure out ways in which you might uh, try to figure this out. I mean, I can answer if you want. Well, there is a mechanism called, uh, enshrined in our antitrust laws, called in which if a company is taking up too much of a uh, share hold, hold of a, a certain hold market. A hold on a second. Sorry to interrupt. I'm really sorry, but uh, we're trying to figure this out without government. Without government? Yes. Okay. Exactly. So. So what if someone's just hogging all the land on, let's say, the lake, and someone else wants to build a house there, but the other guy won't let anyone build a house on the lake because he owns that whole lake. Well, how are you going to build a house there without, you know, shooting the goddamn guy? So you're going to need to have some legal mediation to help settle the dispute, either in a civil court of law or something like that, because... Yeah, it's not right for someone to hog a lake like that. People have a right to uh, waters. Well, the thing is, though, he has a right to hog the... He doesn't have a right to hog the whole lake. Of course he does. I mean, he's the rightful owner, unless he stole it. I'm assuming that he acquired all that land with legitimate means. Now, he can do with that land whatever he wishes, but uh, he is also responsible. But wanna, for what if someone else wants to use that lake because the fish is really nice? Well, like if then, the fishing is really nice in that lake, and he's well, hogging it, how well, is that just? Well, it's just because 
simply owning property is passive, so he doesn't need to justify having owned it, assuming, assuming he acquired it legitimately. So for the sake of this example, we're assuming that he acquired it legitimately. So basically, his property is a de facto state within an anarcho-capitalist society. Uh, that's a that's a side argument. Sure, he can let people onto the lake that's, that's in exchange not for rent. That's uh, that's completely that's not even uh relevant to the question. So to answer really? your question, it seems simple... like I'm tearing you to shreds right now. Here's it. No, not really. Just it's actually, slowly it's actually, wearing you down, buddy. It's actually a very simple. Uh, well, you're projecting in that case because you can't really make an argument ethically. Justifying the state. No, I can't think of a reason of how you can settle that dispute without the use of government. Well, let's not forget or that this entire force. question is completely irrelevant to the overwhelming question. And in this case, it's just about a, it's just a question of what aboutism. Quite frankly, I'm actually entertaining you by answering this question at all. But uh, I mean, to answer to actually answer the question. If uh, a person wants to do something with that lake, or at least build a house on it, then they'll probably be willing to give the per give that guy who's just sitting on his land, not even making use of it, money. He probably doesn't value it all that much. And even if he does, or he's just being a stubborn asshole, it means that uh, your mon that money is probably better spent somewhere else. There might be other lakes. There might be a uh, you know lake that's close by, or you know a hill that's overlooking. That he doesn't own. Either way, there are plenty of options available, and if he's open to allowing you to rent, then he might be open to allowing you to uh, buy as well. Either well, way, that might be uh, the case in a in Minnesota, but in a state in which water is scarce, people might need that lake for you know to pump water into their homes for drinking and bathing and the like. Yeah, and, and if he owns uh, that whole lake. And they won't be able to satisfy their needs. Uh, sure, they can. They can build their reservoirs. They can collect rainwater. They might create an arrangement with the owner of the lake that they pump out some of the water in exchange. For oh yeah, rainwater. collect polluted rainwater. That's going to be healthy. Sure, why not? I mean, you can filter that out. It's not hard. Literally anyone, literally anyone could buy a microfiber towel. But uh, yeah. You just, uh, there's all sorts of uh, things you can do. You're not limited to one option, and the idea that you need states to solve all your problems is just, uh, well, actually, it's very dangerous thinking because it mean it's just a, it's inevitably increasing state power as you're simply always going to look towards the government to, to be the primary source of solutions to your problems rather than trying to figure this out for yourself. No, we only look to the government to solve practical problems, not perceived ones. Well, we don't want government to solve any problem because government is financially unjust. Oh my god! This is the core problem. Why is it unjust? Can you explain it to me? Maybe you I should already, use your own creativity. I already did. I've explained it several times. There is no configuration of a state that does not violate self-ownership or property rights. Usually both. Well, it has to be self-ownership because property rights are derived from self-ownership. Well, I'm not saying the system is ideal, but it's the best we got, buddy. I'm sorry. So you admit that the state is... As I quote from Benjamin Franklin, we have one of the worst forms of government, but it's better than all the other systems we tried. That doesn't uh, that doesn't mean anything. But you admit that the system is fundamentally unjust. I wouldn't say unjust. I'd say the best we have. But it's unethical. At least it's not as unethical as monarchy or dictatorship or all those other evil regimes that killed millions upon millions upon millions of people. Fair enough, but it's still unethical, right? 
I won't say unethical, I would say amoral, amoral. That is, it doesn't have, it's not inherently ethical or unethical in its well, own it is sense. It is inherently ethical. It's a, it violates. Why? Because you say so? No, because I can objectively prove that it steals from you. And I have already done so. It takes it takes your property without your consent. It violates self-ownership, violates property rights, it violates the non-aggression principle, it violates the uh, rule of non-contradiction, and it violates the consistency principle. Okay, I think I've had enough of this debate. I think I've learned all I needed to learn from you, and oh. I need to go to bed anyway, so. All right, it's well, been a nice fun. debate, Heretic, yep. and Thanks see you on the flip side. And uh, have fun with Esso. I won't. Okay, see ya. Bye.